Hello, my name is Abdul Mati Asiri, and I'd like to welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. In this uh, video, I'd like to cover another non normal, which is unreliable airspeed. Keep in mind the scenarios that I'm covering here is what you expect in the simulator training, but by no means I'm talking about a real uh, life situation, so please keep that in mind. There are three main scenarios that will get unreliable airspeed in your simulator training. The first one is on the takeoff roll and that is prior to 80 knots or at 80 knots the second is after liftoff and the third is somewhere in the cruise so i'm gonna simulate a normal takeoff and i'll pause at each step to talk about either the takeoff roll or the unreliable airspeed all right so that said let's start our takeoff i'm gonna release the parking brake and as you know, we'll spool up the engines to 40% N1 or so. And then we'll press TOGA, we'll call the FMA changes, set takeoff thrust, pilot monitoring, thrust set. So spool up the engines to 40% N1. Let the engine stabilize for a bit, and then we'll press TOGA. N1 heading select TOGA, takeoff thrust, thrust set. And now we come to the first scenario, which is the 80 knots call. As you know, the pilot monitoring will call 80 knots. In this scenario, we are assuming that the captain is the pilot monitoring. So he will look down and see. Once he has 80 knots, he'll call 80 knots. Now, as a pilot flying, you need to make sure to take your eyes off the runway and to glance at the airspeed. And make sure you have either 80 knots or somewhere around 80 knots so if by the time that you look down it's 82 83 that is fine but if you look down and you see 50 or 60 knots then what do you do there's no specific procedure as far as i know either in the qrh or in the fctm but here is what i do and what i suggest you do as well unless again you have something other than that mentioned in your uh, training since as a pilot monitoring you will not execute the uh, reject if you look down and you see that you do not have a reliable airspeed meaning you heard the 80 knots call you look down and you see 60 50 or maybe you see 100 or 110 you call unreliable airspeed you have control and that is a signal for the captain to resume the control of the airplane he know now what's the problem and he's going to initiate the reject of course if you are the captain flying then you just call unreliable airspeed reject another thing to mention here about the uh, 80 knots check sometimes as a pilot monitoring i forget to call 80 knots so by the time i look down or i remember that i need to call the 80 knots I look down and I see 90 knots. If you look down and you see something different than 80 knots and you did not call 80 knots, just call whatever speed you see there. Because you don't want to have as a pilot monitoring 100 knots and then you call 80 knots. Because if the other pilot looks down and he sees 100, he will assume that uh, there is unreliable airspeed situation and initiate the reject. So remember, if you forget to call 80 knots, call whatever speed you see there. And what I do personally, uh, when I fly, when I see 80 knots in my uh, side, as a pilot monitoring, I call 80 knots, but I glance at the other airspeed, just to see. Again, if you are a first officer and you glance and you see a difference, do not uh, say anything. As, as a first officer, pilot monitoring, you just call 80 knots. But as a captain, since I am the person who will do the reject, usually I, I do check for both sides. All right, so this is the first scenario here at 80 knots. Again, if the pilot monitoring calls 80 knots, you look down, you see either 60 or 100, then you call unreliable airspeed, you have control. And we'll uh, take it from here now to the second scenario. So I'm going to release, we'll continue the normal takeoff now. V1. Rotate. So 
So a normal smooth uh, pitch up to initially 10 degrees until you have some indication of a climb of the airplane and then the pilot monitoring remember the positive rate call is out of the altimeter and not the vertical speed so you want to make sure that you have a positive indication in the altimeter before you call positive rate so positive rate gear up gear up and usually in the simulator training somewhere after takeoff you will see now IAS disagree a message in amber here saying indicated airspeed disagree usually this is gonna be picked up by the pilot flying before the pilot monitoring because remember the pilot monitoring is busy doing ATC communication raising the gear doing the uh, raising the flaps doing the after takeoff flow and so on so usually because the pilot flying is just inside checking the instruments uh, the pilot flying will see it first so when you see it as a pilot flying or whoever see it first should call it what do you call whatever message you have IS disagree or indicated airspeed disagree unreliable airspeed recall items this is again initiation for to do the recall items by both pilots as a pilot flying there are four steps and here here is the uh, the short version of them autopilot auto throttle flight director off so those are the three first steps you want to disengage the autopilot disengage the auto throttle and turn the flight directors off so let's say that we got the message here is disagree we announced it and reliable airspeed recall items and we'll uh, disconnect the auto throttle autopilot is already disengaged but there's no harm of just doing the double click here to disconnect the autopilot and then you switch your flight director off if by the time that you did the uh, those two items uh, the pilot monitoring still did not reach your side and switch the flight director off so those are the first three steps autopilot auto throttle and flight directors off we come to the fourth step which depends do you have any flaps or are the flaps up in this situation we have uh, flaps so we'll go with a 10 degrees pitch up and 80 percent n1 so we'll trim the airplane for 10 degrees pitch up and at the same time adjust the thrust for 80 percent n1 now once you trim the airplane once you have it under control the pilot monitoring usually will do the uh, checklist pilot flying will do uh, flying and communication so once you get everything under control all the recall items are done you say airspeed unreliable non-normal checklist and as a pilot flying now since you have the communication you'll talk to ATC uh, declaring an emergency and request either runway heading block altitude or whatever because now remember you don't want to limit yourself with any turns you want to just reduce the workload on yourself as much as possible so you don't want to uh, restrict yourself with the altitude if that is possible by ATC so that's why you uh, of course the instructor is your ATC in this case you'll tell him or you'll tell her that you request runway heading and block altitude what block altitude we'll say from 1000 to 6000 hopefully by that time the uh, no normal checklist has been uh, completed already if not again you can request another higher or lower altitude whatever safe altitude that you feel uh, you need again a block altitude and don't go after a specific uh, altitude so we talked about the situation where the uh, flaps are not up if the flaps are up then we'll go with four degrees pitch up and 75 percent in one so we'll pitch up for four degrees 75 percent in one and again the same thing unreliable airspeed non-normal checklist so here's the main part for the video now let me just give you some a discussion about this uh, non-normal in one of the steps in the non-normal checklist it will ask you if you can identify a reliable airspeed and now you have here two airspeed indicators and as you know you have a standby uh, airspeed indication here as well 
and you have a ground speed in the CDU as well as in the ND. At low altitudes like this after uh, takeoff, you can use this to identify which airspeed uh, reliable you have because usually for low altitudes, the ground speed is going to be very close to indicated airspeed. However, at high altitudes, I don't think you can uh, use this indication or it will help you. The other thing is if you look at the three airspeed indication, if two of them agree, then usually those two are uh, the good, the other one different as uh, the unreliable source. When should you do this step? You have two options. Either to wait until you get to that step in the non-normal checklist, because remember with these thrust setting and pitch attitude, the airplane is safe. And those are the memory items. The step trying to identify which airspeed is reliable is mentioned in the a non-normal checklist, but not as a recall item, but again, it's just an item that you read and do at that time. So this is option one, you do it following the non-normal checklist or the QRH. The second option is follow the, the, uh, the lead of the captain. If the captain elects to identify the uh, reliable airspeed or to look if they have a reliable airspeed at this time after finishing the recall items and getting the airplane under control, you can do that as well. Do not fixate trying to identify which airspeed is reliable because remember the airplane now is safe to fly with this pitch attitude and N1. So me personally, I'd like to take it slow, follow the uh, checklist, again slowly and intentionally. You don't want to rush uh, the identification and then ending up with maybe another unreliable airspeed and you end up uh, crashing the, uh, the airplane in the simulator. Okay, so we talked about the uh, the first two scenarios, which is prior to 80 knots or at 80 knots. The second is uh, immediately after takeoff. The third one is in the cruise. So what is the difference in the cruise? If you are cruising and then one of the B2 tube got frozen up or got blocked up, you'll not, any, you'll not see any changes in the airspeed indicator unless the airplane climbs or descends. Because in that situation, the airspeed will start acting like an altimeter if you climb, the airspeed will increase. If you descend, the airspeed will decrease as well. So usually after some cruise time, the instructor will fail one airspeed and then will ask you to either climb or descend. You'll have the message here and you'll have the indication of the unreliable airspeed. So again, anytime you suspect unreliable airspeed, you do the memory items immediately and then follow the checklist to try to identify which airspeed is reliable. If there is no airspeed reliable, then again, you follow the checklist and it will give you a thrust and a pitch attitude setting for each uh, phase of the flight. A bit of tube on the left side get blocked or frozen. And then the other side, might get frozen after some time and the ice on the left side might melt away so keep that in mind what i'm trying to say here is in your day-to-day -day flying try to note the pitch attitude and thrust setting that the autopilot and auto throttle uses for each phase of the flight for the climb 250 for the climb with the above 10,000 with the high speed for cruise for the descent this will help you Fly the airplane safely and have some reference pitch attitudes and thrust setting for yourself just to even maybe pick if you have any reliable airspeed even before the message comes. And even if, if you have any reliable airspeed and you did the recall items, you decided that uh, this, for example, is the reliable airspeed, at least now you have one more thing to, to look for because you have a reference uh, settings for N1 and and uh, pitch attitude to give you a certain speed and if that speed is not displayed to your side then it is a red flag for you to reassess the situation again. Uh, the non-normal checklist is a long checklist so if you want me to go in detail with the checklist step by step uh, let me know in the comments if there are enough people asking for the same thing we'll do it otherwise I just wanted to highlight some of the things that usually they don't talk about much in the training 
I just wanted to share with you some of these uh, tips and techniques. Uh, as always, remember that these videos are just intended for your training. Yeah. It's my personal understanding and my personal opinion, so keep that in mind, please. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'll be more than happy to answer them. And until uh, next time, this is Abdul Mati Asiri. Wish you a safe flying and smooth landing. Thank you for watching.